Well, hello everybody. It is Sunday evening, just about midnight. And it is time to just share some reflections with you. And why do I do this? Simply, very simply, just to share some thoughts as you work out your salvation. This was an admonition by the Apostle Paul. I was just speaking to a wonderful man down in Australia last night on Skype, and it was one of the things that we talked about, that it seems like today we have made Christianity too easy. But before I even began this presentation, I had a video that I watched that was sent from a friend of mine. I don't know exactly where this picture was taken, video was taken. It was either probably Pakistan or maybe even someplace in India. But it showed some young Christians laying on the ground. They'd already been knocked out. Then it showed some men literally just jumping up and down and stomping on them until they were dead. This is the type of persecution that goes on, not only by ISIS and Muslims, but others who really hate the sons and daughters of the true and living God. And yet we are called to go out. It is a command by Jesus himself to go out and make disciples of the nations. That's not an easy thing to do in the world today. It was not an easy thing to do in the time of the original apostles as they set forth going out into the known world at that time preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the Holy Spirit, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our tasks are no different. However, over a period of many, many years, the emphasis, <clears throat> the emphasis has changed and one of those things is the emphasis on whose cross do we pick up daily. You know, there's an admonition that Jesus gave that if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to pick up your cross. When he said that, when he said that, he was speaking, even looking forward to the cross that he would bear. Because the cross was for one thing and one thing only, death. I'll say it again. The cross, the Roman cross, and the crosses used in crucifixion in even other nations was for one thing and one thing only, death. Even today, as ISIS and other mis uh, Muslim uh, extremists, they use the cross for death. Death to Christians. And you see, when you pick up a cross, whose cross are you picking up? Are you picking up the cross that Jesus bore? Or are you picking up your own cross? The things that you want to carry as your burden. Because let's look at it. Jesus carried that cross. And there's many different ways to describe the cross that he carried. He might have carried 
the cross that we see as meaning two large pieces of lumber were gathered together and formed a cross. Or he may have only carried a very heavy cross timber that they would lay him on and then place him upon a standing pole. Either one has the same effect. But what cross are you carrying? Are you carrying just your own burdens? And you can lay it down anytime you want? Or are you carrying Jesus' cross that you can't lay down because it is established for one purpose and one purpose only? The death of our own desires to place us in a humble position where we say that I am following after Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And those things that need to die, even to my own life, I am willing to pick up that cross. In the greatest effect, when we look at it, we have to look at the cross as being also that portion of our life that has to do with our own pride and the things that we place first in our life. I'm reading a book, a tremendous book, called Marked Men by Apostle Al Houghton. He's been a friend of mine for a number of years. This is a tremendous book. It's made a great impact on my life. This is about the third time I've read it now. And I'm going to share a couple of thoughts from this book. And it talks about how we should prepare. How we should prepare. And Paul is going to give us an idea of what we need to do. Because... Paul is demonstrating, first of all, an attitude which is consistently seen as being godly throughout Scripture. One of the major signs reflecting application is the cross, is the issue of humility. And this is manifest in individual's ability to accept or reject reproof. Proverbs says, a wise man seeks reproof. And Paul is saying that he is inviting the cross because he does not trust even himself, even in his own conscience. If it is clear, he still does not totally Trust his heart. What is your heart? Your heart is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And have you turned that over? Have you turned that over to God? Paul says he is openly demonstrating a heart attitude of one who has embraced the cross. Not his cross, but the cross of Jesus we could look in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, and Paul says this, For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. And just as Paul says he would be judged by the Lord, we also come under the same judgment. Therefore, judge nothing before it's time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, that's your mind, your will, and your emotions, and then 
each one's praise will come from God. So again, when we pick up the cross of Jesus, this is a mark of humility. And it only comes with being baptized in humiliation. And the fruit, the fruit of it, comes in our adversity. The fruit of adversity is humility, compassion, and love. So I say out to you, each one that would be listening to this, put down your own cross and pick up the cross that Jesus has set before us. Because when we do that, we walk in the same humility, lack of pride, degradation, that it took for Jesus to be placed in that position where he took upon himself the sin of the world. There's only one man that has been called to do that. But we are called to pick up a cross that would resemble what he had done so that we might go forth and show both the love of God for all of humanity and I say it all the time on various declarations that I make on Facebook or even in email letters all lives matter and that's tied to John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on him would receive life and not death. And that's what we want to share. That is the meaning of the cross that we are called even to bear that we would bear witness, that we would bear witness of our Savior, that we would manifest this in both the love of God and in the power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So think upon this. Each day, what cross is going to be the most important cross that you will carry. God bless you all, and we will see you next time and share what God would have us to learn today that we might expand the kingdom of God, that we might touch the lives of people who have a great hunger, who have a great void in their life that can only be filled by the love of God. And the love of God was demonstrated by Jesus. It was shown by Jesus. And now that responsibility has been given to each one of us as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, that we are to share that love, that we are to demonstrate that same power, and that we are to have the same passion for the lives of of all those that we would come in contact with. We'll see you next time. This is Douglas Allen Frazier. God bless you all.